All right, welcome back. I hope you're having an awesome time so far. Our next speaker is Liliang Cheng. He is a senior modeler at Fannie Mae. Please join me in welcoming him to our virtual stage. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I want to give a presentation regarding using the sentimental analysis using machine learning methodology. Uh, I will present a case study in the stock price prediction. So first, I want to uh, say a little thing about disclaimer. So this presentation does not constitute any investment advice or trading advice. Uh, the view is only about my personal view. is not my is not the view of my employer. Uh, first, I want to bring the quote by Abraham Lincoln. Uh, he once said, "With public sentiment, nothing can fail. Without it, nothing can succeed." So he stressed the importance of the public sentiment. So today, I also want to talk about the public sentiment, how will that affect our analysis? Before I jump into the detailed presentation, I want to bring up a few questions which might be relevant to our discussion. So first question is, is investor sentiment already priced in in stock market, in the stock price? A second one is investor sentiment. Is that a risk factor for stock price? Which means whether the sentiment is drive the stock price movement. The third one is does the investor sentiment impact the stock return in a very meaningful way? If it does, how do we measure investor sentiment quantitatively? So here is a data landscape normally for financial area or financial industry or other industry we are getting a lot of data as someone said data is the new oil so originally we have so-called structured data that structured data can be easily available to a lot of financial institution uh, such as the stock price, the corporate data, or macroeconomic data. So this is already available for, for, for a lot of financial institutions. There are also a lot of unstructured data uh, in the format of social media data, ESG data, satellite data, credit card transaction data, internet activity data, and the survey data. Sentiment data is kind of a special it can exist in the form of unstructured data in the raw format, but someone or some company could translate the sentiment data into a structured data. In the future slide, in the next slides, I will show how we can translate the so-called unstructured sentiment data into the structured sentiment data. Sentiment data by data source format can be in different format. For example, it can be in a numerical data, such as a credit card transaction, ESG data. It can also be in a visual data, such as the satellite data. It can also be in a form of linguistic data, such as Twitter, stock trade, microblog, WS, uh, Wall Street Journal, or Reddit data. Uh, here, uh, I want to highlight the linguistic data because in my particular use case, I use the linguistic data. Uh, it also can be a hybrid data. For example, the survey data can be either a numerical data or some of the linguistic data. So what is a sentiment data and what is not sentiment data? Some of the data uh, which already existed publicly that might not be the sentiment data, such as the macroeconomic data, for example, home price, GDP, and uh, some data is also available publicly uh, for, for financial institution or for retail, retail investor. That's also not a sentiment data, such as the price book ratio, price earning ratio, EBITDA revenue, but some data might be in a gray area, so which means they could they could be the originally 
public available, but somebody might use that to derive the sentiment, for example, uh, sent, such as the inflation and unemployment rate. So sentiment data can be uh, unstructured data and can be translated into a structured data. If we look at the sentiment data by its impact duration, we can categorize into long-term impact sentiment data, medium-term sentiment data, or short-term sentiment data. For example, long-term data can be like a Google Trends, implied volatility, such as the VIX, or economic sentiment indicator. The medium duration sentiment data could be a bull bear index, or option price, or put call parity, or some of the inside trading, or Bitcoin, or gold index. The short term sentiment data could be uh, social media data, such as from Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or from the put call premium, or from some of the news sentiment, such as the Wall Street Journal. Uh, so a lot of time we have to pay attention to the duration because if if the sentiment data is very short term impact we should consider it will decay very fast for example we cannot use uh, last year social media data social media data to forecast uh, this year's stock price previously i asked a question regarding whether the sentiment is driving the stock price or is the sentiment already priced in. So here I want to show uh, a grand causality test. The upper charts will show the stock price and the lower charts will show the, the sentiment score for that for a particular stock. And uh, the grand causality test actually can tell us statistically whether one variable is driving the other variable. So from the Granger causality test, it shows the sentiment can actually lease the stock price. So which means it actually drive the, the stock price movement. How do we measure the sentiment? Here is three basic example. For example, someone say, I'm happy with your decision. We can consider that's a positive sentiment. I will give a positive one as the sentiment score, sentiment number. If we say this will be the worst investment, I will give a negative sentiment, which is negative one for this sentiment point. If when someone say I'm going to take a vacation now, I will give a neutral sentiment, which is zero for this sentiment point. Once we have this sentiment point, we can translate the sentiment point into sentiment score. Here, there are three different ways to derive the uh, uh, sentiment score. The first one, the bullish ratio, is just uh, the ratio between the number of positive number versus the total, total positive and the negative number. The bearish ratio is the number of negative points over the total of the positive and the negative number. Someone can also derive the bullish index. The bullish index is, log of, is the log of net number of positive points plus one divided by number of negative points plus one. Uh, in my analysis in the few later slides, I used the, the bullish score to for the sentiment score. So here is once we have a sentiment score, we can merge this data together with a, a particular stock. So here you can see this is a one stock price in the time series man manner. Uh, the second, the first column is the date. Second column is the the close price. And the, the third, third column is the sentiment score for that particular stock. So normally for the sentiment score, it's a number between zero and one. Before I start my machine learning using the sentiment, sentiment score, 
first I want to translate the stock price into a, a stock log return. The reason I want to do that is because the stock price movement itself is not a stationary process. So if you see the upper charts, it shows a, a, a stock price movement. Uh, a, stationary, a, a stationary process means, uh, means a data, whether a data is a constant mean or a constant variance. But for stock price, normally it's not a constant mean or it's not a constant variance. So stock price movement normally is not a stationary process. So in order to to use the model better, to use the machine learning model better, I prefer to translate the stock price into the stock lock return. So here, the upper, the lower right part, I derive the lock return in terms of the in terms of the the next day's stock price divided by the uh, today's stock price and the give a lock. So I can translate the upper upper charts into the lower charts into the stock return and. It, from the stock return charts, you can see it has a better constant mean and a constant variance. Once we have the sentiment data, how do we how do we use this sentiment data? So my approach is combining the sentiment with the machine learning for prediction. So the machine learning model can be in different form. Someone could use a logistic regression. Someone could use a decision tree. Someone could use a a time series model such as the ARIMA and the GACH model. And uh, right now it's getting more and more popular for the neural network. So someone could use LSTM model or Facebook profit model or GAN model for the for new neural network analysis. So in my particular use case, I use this LSTM model. Uh, I don't want to spend so much time to, to describe the, the detail of uh, LSTM model because I believe there are a lot of tutorial or, or document talking about that online. So I just want to stress a, a few good good points about using LSTM LSTM model. Basically, LSTM model is a neural network model. It's one type of the recurrent neural network model. It can pro process the sequence of data easily, and uh, this. LSTM model is suitable for time series data. Uh, also, the good thing is we can use LSTM model to handle multi-variable -vari inputs. And the LS LSTM model has feedback connections. It's good for vanishing gradient problem. Uh, the, the other good thing is for LSTM model, it can handle noise, distributed, and continuous data and there's no need for param parameter tuning. For, for my models, I want to uh, choose what's my dependent variable and uh, what's the independent variable. Uh, my use case is very simple. The dependent variable will be the stock lock return and the independent variable, I have two choices. Uh, the first choice is I just use the stock lock return itself. And the second choice is I want to combine the star lock return plus the sentiment score. Here is the list of my training data sets and the testing data sets and the look back and the look, look forward window. I use the last five years historical stock data and the sentiment data. And for the training data sets, for the test data sets ratio, I use the 80 to 20% split. And also, I use 80 to 20% 20, 20 split between the so-called training data sets versus the cross-validation data sets. Uh, for the look-back window, I use the 30 days past stock and the sentiment history for look-back window and to forecast the five days ahead stock price. So this chart showing uh, using the LSTM model, I'm, I'm doing the backtesting from the 2020 uh, July to 2021 April. I did the backtesting for five days ahead of stock price. 
uh, this is almost 180 days. Uh, the black curve is the actual stock, stock closing price of Google's. The blue one is using the LSTM model, but only based on the stock lock return. The blue, the red one is using the LSTM model, but based on the both the stock lock return and the sentiment score on Google. Uh, first, I want to say the LSTM model is a past dependent, so which means uh, LSTM model results will be impacted by different seeds. So each seed will give us a different, uh, diff different prediction. So in order to get more meaningful results, I calculate the average return on different paths based on uh, Monte Carlo simulation. So I run multiple paths and get all the average to get the average log return. Once I get the average log return, I can use the, 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 this equation to translate it back from the log return into the stock price. For Google's, maybe we can see both the red curve and the blue curve are fitting the data pretty well. Maybe there's a slightly uh, better for the red one. I think that's because maybe the volatility of Google stock price is, is, is less volatile, so we didn't see dramatic uh, increase of, on the performance. So the next one, I want to show another example. So this is this is my test back back test up here back test on Amazon. So I'm using the Amazon stock data to to do the back testing. I look at the five days ahead of stock price and for for between 2020 July to 2021 April. The same thing. The black curve is the actual data. The the blue one is the LSTM model based on the stock lock return, and the red one is the LSTM model based on the stock lock return and the sentiment. So in this chart, you can see very clearly uh, the stock lock return plus the sentiment prediction give us a better prediction compared with just using the stock lock, lock just using the stock lock return itself. So so. I think the, the reason it's give us a better prediction that's because of the whole Amazon stock price is is much volatile. So the the sentiment can actually help us to improve the performance. So my general conclusion about uh, my user my use case is the sentiment or investment sentiment plus the stock log return will focus more closer to the actual stock price compared to using the stock lock return itself. And uh, the, news, the new information uncovered by the machine learning is statistically significant for investors. So here is some of the reference, which might be beneficial to some people who will be interested in using the sentiment to do the stock price prediction and uh, uh, thank you for for your attention and that's all my presentation awesome thank you so much this has been amazing and if you could stop sharing your screen perfect i know this audience wants to give you a huge virtual round of applause because that was incredible thank you for sharing with us today thanks Thank you. For the audience, it's time for you to make your way to your next session. Along the way, make sure you accept your connection request and take some time to check out our amazing exhibits. Thanks so much and we'll see you around.